Welcome to this clown's garage. Actually, living room in this case. Oh, anyway, you, you get the point. So in this video, I will discuss how an HEI distributor works. This particular one is from a Chevy Swole Block and a carbureted one. And uh, how you could tell it's a carbureted one, you could tell from the module. Well, I get into that. Anyway, let's not jump ahead. Down here, this basically goes on top of here. Um, HEI normally means the coil is on top of the distributor cap. There also, there's a different type of HVI, but I'm not going to talk about that. Um, so this is how this works. Down here, you're going to see a little gear. And if you see my camshaft video, you're going to see where that gear connects to on the camshaft. Now, as the motor turns, it turns that gear down there. And this pretty much uh, is based on top of the intake manifold and this part of the distributor doesn't, doesn't turn it's held down by distributor clamp so there's a shaft inside that spins as you can see there okay uh, now let's show you what happens here first okay the, on this shaft there's a reluctor wheel and it looks like this and this is the the shaft and that's the reluctor wheel and it has teeth on it like that and this is the base remember I said this stays stationary this doesn't turn that's the base so here only this turns and this is a small block Chevy and it turns clockwise um, other make some models that you know it could be counterclockwise but Chevy's are clockwise okay so what the pick th this is essentially this is this with the reluctant wheel and this uh, these teeth here these teeth here are actually stationary and they're on the base of the distributor so these don't turn just these turn with these these teeth and this shaft turn so this whole thing here is called um, pickup coil Okay. Now the pickup coil, there's two wires coming from it, and it goes into. I don't know if you could see that too well. That's the module, and this one here is a four-pin module. One, two, three, four. And these are the wires I'm talking about. I don't know if you could see that too well. There's two wires here. They go to this uh, pickup coil, and it goes into one side of the module. Now a two pin, a four pin module, which is what this is, two and two, is uh, is more for carburetor motors, which use uh, mechanical timing, which I'll get to in a second, and vacuum timing advances. So this is pretty much a self-contained distributor. All you need to power this thing is one keyed on ignition hot uh, battery positive wire going to the coil over here, which I'll, I'll, talk, to, I'll talk about later on. And this is pretty much, like I said, self-contained unit, the toy you need for this. Once, this. once the motor starts turning, it does everything for you, timing-wise. Now, there's three types of modules. There's a 4-pin like this one. There's a 5-pin and a 7-pin. The 5-pin which came out, I believe, in 1978, uh, was the first attempt at uh, electronic timing control. And there was a provision, one of the pins, uh, which connected to a, to a knock sensor on the motor. And obviously, when there's a knock in the motor, you want it to, you want it to pull back timing. So... That, that was their early attempt to, to do that with the module. Now, that, there's also a 7-pin. The 7-pin, there were no mechanical advanced uh, mechanisms. And the computer controlled the timing. Now, you could use a 7-pin with a 5 or a 4-pin. It's backward compatible. And uh, there's ways to do that, which I'm not going to get into in this video. Um, so let's continue here. These two wires 
going to this uh, ignition pickup coil. And what happens is when it tips to the reluctor, line up with the coil's tip, the coil tips here. These are the coil tips, and this is reluctor, like I said. Um, sorry, coil tips and the reluctor, and the tips and the reluctor. Now, when these line up with the coil tips, uh, essentially what happens is the module sends a uh, senses and sends a uh, voltage to the coil pickup. And what happens is when these line up, the voltage goes down to zero. And there's a transistor in here. A transistor is basically like a relay. Um, it commands things on and off, pretty much. For uh, It's used in computers. This is, the module is basically the brain of the distributor. This controls everything. So once it senses zero voltage, when everything lines up, it uh, breaks the ground circuit in the primary uh, circuit of the coil, which I'll get to in a minute. So that's what that does. Now remember that because I'm going to get back to that. Okay. Now since we're still here, let me talk about what happens to the, mechanic, the mechanical advance and the vacuum advance. Now when the motor first starts, uh, it should be retarded in timing. Not like retarded like this clown, but retarded in other words, there's no advance to it. Real quick, I don't want to get into it too much because I could take forever talking about this. Um, timing is the relationship of the spark, of when the spark occurs, first occurs inside the combustion chamber in relation to where the piston is. Now, if it gets there sooner, you advance the timing. If it gets there later, it's retarded. Okay, so when you start first up the car up, it likes to, the motor likes to retarded timing, which was called initial timing. Now, once you start it up and the engine creates vacuum, this vacuum uh, control here, which is pretty much like a diaphragm, this vacuum canister here, senses the vacuum, vacuum pulls in here, and pulls a little lever in here. Hold on a second. Pulls this lever that way, which um, advances the timing. Let me show you how that's done. Sorry, I can't really draw it too well. This here is that little vacuum thingy over there. Okay, It's connected to the outside part of the... Sorry, I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's connected to the outside part of the reluctor. Not the reluctor, the pickup coil. This, this pickup. Now, I think I mentioned before that this pickup was uh, stationary with this uh, stand over this uh, base of the distributor. Let me back. Uh, let me uh, let me change that. Sorry, I'm I'm a little retarded myself. Um, because you could see, I don't know if you could see too well, you can't really see. You see that? That's a tooth on the on the pickup coil. Now this only moves with this. So it's not really fixed on here. It's fixed only uh, when there's no vacuum to this. So, vacuum's here, it pulls this, and it turns it this way. Now what happens, if you look at this reluctor, this reluctor wheel, this goes counterclockwise, this, sorry, this goes clockwise. Now if you pull this, this way, counterclockwise, as this turns clockwise, you're going to make the event sooner. These tips are going to contact sooner. And which I will just explain what that happened, what happens later on when he's uh, to meet. Okay, I hope you're still with me. Now, in stock form, say around 2000 RPM, what happens is this doesn't work anymore. 
this maxes out. So then these are centrifugal weights here, which spin this rotor. All right. Now these open up. This is stock, like I said, stock is around 2000 RPM. You could change that, you know, changing these springs here. So these open up, and as these, these open up, what happens is it turns, it turns the rotor more forward. Now remember, this is always spinning with the shaft, this rotor, clockwise, okay? Now above 2000 RPM in this scenario, it will make this turn faster. More, it'll, it'll, it'll pull it more forward when it's spinning. What that's going to do is, this spins underneath here, this contacts. I don't know if I could show you real quick. You see that? You see those terminals over there? Now every time this gets sparked from a sorry, this gets sparked from a coil, and then this sparks into the terminal ends over there, and each one here fires a cylinder. Now if this turns clockwise and these centrifugal uh, forces here push it faster clockwise or more, more advance it more as this is turning it'll get to these quicker and it'll fire the cylinders at a faster rate than what is the input rate from the um, gear down there from the camshaft hope that makes sense all right now, once these contact, this senses that, voltage goes to zero, and what happens here is, once that goes to zero, like I said before, a transistor opens, and it breaks connection going to the primary side of the coil. Alright, let me discuss how this works, and I'll get back to that. If you ever hear people talk about primary side and secondary side, this is where it meets, okay, in the coil. This is essentially a transformer. What a transformer does is it takes a certain amount of voltage and it boosts it up or lowers it. But in this case, it boosts it up a lot. How it does that is, let me draw this real quick. You have, this is your primary side. You have windings in here. Windings, 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 windings. And it goes out here. All right. You have negative coming from your distributor. From this. And this is your positive. Coming from your ignition hot. This is your primary. The primary side and these are the primary windings. Now the secondary uh, windings, same concept, but these are wound around the, f the primary windings, okay, and it goes out here. And you have negative here and positive. Now what the distributor does, it controls the negative current to the primary windings, all right? That's what's called uh, a ground trigger because it triggers from the ground, the negative side, all right? Now, what happens is whenever these reluctor teeth touch the pickup coil uh, teeth here, it breaks this negative power, this negative uh, side of the circuit. In other words, this circuit, this primary side is always, if these aren't touching, aren't, aren't to get, you know, uh, connected, you know, close to each other right there, then this is always p has power, the primary side. The negative side the negative side of the, of the secondary windings, uh, this is ground 
through there's a wire cone here which I'll talk about in a bit in a, in a minute and this negative side goes through here the secondary side all right goes through here and it goes to the wire here because this connects here which I'll also talk about um, then it goes in here and it grounds out to the body of the distributor which grounds onto the motor and you get your negative side there uh, for the secondary the positive of the secondary shoots down the spark okay that's where all the spark is uh, and in this case it's underneath let me show you here right in the middle you see that that's what that is. That's where you get the spark. And that shoots here, and this distributes it around through all these terminals. And these represent um, one for each cylinder. Okay. Now, what happens is, whenever these meet, remember back here, whenever these meet, it breaks this negative side here. There's no more current in here. What, what that does is, a transformer or a coil in this in this uh, instance is also an inducer. Now, what that means is this, as this breaks uh, the current flow through this primary windings, that break creates uh, an electromagnetic field, which induces uh, more power. Sorry, which induces power a lot more power in this case the secondary windings then it creates that spark and shoots it out in the middle over there hope you're with me um, now since I don't know if I mentioned it but the secondary side of the windings there's a lot more coil a lot more coils hundreds of more actually and the more the coils the more uh, electricity uh, is induced so in this case, there's less there's less uh, windings in the primary side, and a lot hundreds more in the secondary. So when that electromagnetic field is induced, and, and uh, sorry, when there's a when that electromagnetic field happens and the electricity gets induced, um, it it really shoots out more electricity through the primary side of the secondary windings, which gives you that powerful spark. All right. Uh, what am I up to? Here. All right. Bear with me here because this gets a little involved. Alright. Now, this is the coil. Coil and cap, what they call. I don't know if you can really see there. You have battery, battery positive, ground, coil, uh, negative, and tack. In this case, like I said before, this is a carbureted version, 4-pin module. So all you have to do is uh, connect battery hot over here. Ignition hot. And this is self-contained and it works. That's all you need. Um, three wires. These three wires connect to this left side here, which is battery positive, ground, and, and uh, coil negative. Battery positive and coil negative. These two are the primary windings. So, and the ground in the middle is your secondary winding uh, negative ground. So that's what the, the three uh, wires are here, which connect here via these flag uh oops this one's broken well anyway they look like this <laughs> these are flag connectors sorry about that okay uh those three connect here one of the the actual negative from the ground in the middle the secondary winding negative that goes through here like i said before into a capacitor uh, hold down ground, uh, screw ground, sorry. That capacitor, what that does is it's for RF noise suppression. So your AM radio doesn't make uh, a lot of 
screeching noises when you're when this is up when it's operating. Also, one more thing to note here: um, the module grounds via distributor base through a. Uh, the screws um, and underneath the screw underneath this module you have a heat sink paste which is a white paste you need that because the module cools down from this base over here acts like a heat sink so without that your module could burn up you need that paste all right uh, the power is brought in from uh, the, ba the, the battery ignition hot and that's the red wire goes into the module which feeds the power to the coil the pickup coil here All right. I think I addressed everything inside the distributor now uh, what do I have left here battery and tack well the tack okay the tack is connected also from the negative side at the module pulses ground trigger and you can see that's how it gets a signal how many revolutions per minute it turns the tack will tell you by that by that uh, signal okay uh, this is the primary what happens here I don't know if I mentioned it <sighs> sorry let me backtrack a little bit battery here comes in and it feeds the coil positive primary here there's two connections this also has two connections this is the primary ground same thing here once for the tack once for the module over there All right and the ground in the middle goes straight where i said before now you pop this bad boy out. Hold on a second. Just give me a little problems here. You see the in the middle of the coil? That, like I said, is your primary winding. Sorry, not your primary winding. Your secondary winding positive that shoots out the, the spark. That's through here. And you see it has a grommet here and has a spring with the carbon brush over here sorry and this goes through in the middle out and connects to here which gives a spark then the spark is distributed via the distributor Ooh. through here And this here is your secondary, your secondary, ah, there's a flag connector in the middle, which connects to your middle ground here. Uh, that middle black wire, the ground, that goes to the capacitor ground, into the base distributor. Now this ground, like I said, is the secondary negative. Right? And these J hooks, you know, they connect down here to the distributor base via um, screws with springs. And I think that's everything. I hope I covered everything, uh, any questions you guys had. And uh, again, my videos are aimed not only to the people that know about racing slash how things work but also cater to the layman people that like to see videos of how things work in layman's terms if you have any questions comments please leave them uh, underneath and uh, please subscribe to my videos and thanks for watching take care bye bye